this video, we're going to talk about BioNano genomics, trading under the ticker symbol BNGO. So the stock gathered a lot of attention back in 2020 and 2021. And till this day, many people are still talking about it and wonder where it may lead them. So we're going to take a look at the stock, the latest price actions, the outlooks, and to determine if it fits our own portfolio. So BioNano Genomics BNGO operates in the genomics sector. It's a relatively less covered and known sector and probably like a sub field of, uh, of the medical or, you know, pharmaceutical field potentially due to the level of sophistication required to actually understand what it does in the first place. Basically, it tries to test out, to map out your genes to detect like, you know, beforehand potential diseases. That's my understanding of what it does. Of course, it's like super, it's like a very, a like a brief version of uh, what it actually does. But I think that it, it gets the job done, okay? It's in the genomics field. Um, it tends to treat people so that they can live longer, healthier, um, that kind of stuff. Back in 2020, it was still a stock that's relatively unknown. And at some point, it was said that, you know, if things don't change, it's going to be delisted from NASDAQ. Now, there has been a new, you know, puff of oxygen that came in because the research community and the science community has praised the company's progress in that field and has basically validated its results. Much like other growth stocks in 2020, it really took off very rapidly and it soon, you know, took off and uh, reached a peak of almost $15. So the good news about a company is that it has revenue. The revenue is growing. The bad news is that it doesn't cover all the fixed expenses yet, despite the fact that it at least covers the, the cost of goods sold, which is in by itself a feat, okay? Because to me, what this means is that the business model is scalable. It's theoretically possible if the company has an infinite amount of time ahead of it. It doesn't, but in my opinion, it at least has some time ahead of it to prove itself, to keep proving itself to us, despite the fact that the market conditions are challenging, to say the least. The cash reserves are going down, but relatively slowly um, compared to like the, the cash level that it currently has, which is more than $300 million. So further dilutions could happen, but not in the near term. Um, when we look at the price action of the stock, it's cur it currently hovers around like a dollar fifty one cents. It's down by thirteen percent in the past five days, thirty three percent in the past thirty days. But here's the interesting part: it's down by seven percent over the past six months. In other words, it's been like yes, there's a there's a overall negative environment. There's a, a an overall bearish environment. However, it's been more or less around the same kind of place for the past six months, which to me is significant. The historical bottom is around 23 cents, but that's before the 2020 takeoff. So for me, it has a limited relevance. The near term bottom, which is far more relevant, in my opinion, is around $1.30. So it's not tested. It's not been tested for some time. And all this despite a negative investment environment. It seems to have at least another 12 months ahead. So, you know, before people need to ask additional questions regarding funding issues, dilutions once again. So my recommendation is to buy now for both trading and investment. The company proved its relevance from like a scientific perspective, if you will. And it has also proven that the core business model works because it has a positive gross margin since like since at least a year or two, okay, since uh, the recent past. So it just needs time for additional adoption from potential customers. Overall, I would say that the maximum exposure is between one to three percent of the portfolio.